Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Lisa Filion, and I'm super excited to be here today to draw a portrait with you from Sketchy, and we're going to be using Procreate on an iPad uh, in order to draw this portrait. So uh, if we haven't met yet, um, you can find me on Sketchy as Pixel Princess, and uh, basically I'm obsessed with drawing in Procreate and have been drawing in Procreate for as long as I can remember. When I first got my very first iPad, I was super excited to start to test out drawing apps. Um, this was before even the Apple Pencil existed, and so I tried a whole bunch of different styli, and it was always something that really interested me. And then when I discovered Procreate, I just felt like I fell in love with the program. So I'm excited to kind of share what I've learned with all of you, and we'll draw together today. So we're going to be drawing. I'm just gonna switch over to um, my iPad view in a second, but if anybody has any questions for me right off the bat, um, why I'm here too is because starting in one week, uh, next Saturday, May 1st, we're starting the 30 Faces 30 Days Sketchy Challenge where it is Procreate focused. So you're gonna have teachers from all over the world who are going to be teaching a variety of different lessons on portrait drawing using Procreate. And I'm super excited about that because I love learning new things from different teachers. Um, I love seeing all the different styles that, that all the different people do. So I'm really excited about that. And I'm one of the teachers for the 30 day challenge. Um, I have two lessons that will be coming out in May. So I'm really excited to also share that with you. So uh, if you haven't signed up yet, just a reminder that you still have time. You can sign up at Sketchy. Uh, so just on Sketchy's website, you'll be able to, to sign up and I'm sure they'll put a link also um, for you from here on YouTube as well so that if you're interested in the challenge um, you'll get access to all of that so it's pretty cool every day a, a new teacher will post a lesson and you'll have one lesson posted for each day of the month in May and uh, you can work at your own pace so they're all video lessons where if you if you don't get around to it one day, that's okay. You can always come back to it at a later date. So, I mean, although it's great to challenge yourself to start a daily drawing practice, um, it's also great that you can go back at any time and watch these videos at your own pace. So that's pretty cool. So I'm gonna switch over to my iPad view and just say hi to everybody. I love seeing where everybody's from. I'm from Ontario, Canada, so that's where I'm coming from. Um, I am an artist and art teacher, so I teach uh, visual arts to high school students, and right now we're t I'm teaching online, so that's been a, a little bit of a different experience, although um, teaching on Sketchy has kind of helped me with that a lot, definitely. And I see, I have some fellow Canadians here from Saskatoon, good morning and from Belgium and Germany and Wales and Hawaii. So cool, I love to see where you're all from and eventually I would like to start traveling again whenever we can start to travel again. Um, so I, I love seeing all of these different places from all around the world. Uh, I have a question here. Do you use a paper-like screen protector? If so, how do you like it? Also, what storage capacity iPad do you use? Okay, so two questions. First answer to your question, I do not use the, a paper screen protector. I know a lot of artists like the, the paper ones because they feel that um, it'll create kind of more friction on, on the screen um, that feels more, I guess, natural, like working with paper. I haven't even tried it. I guess I've never felt inclined to try it because I just got used to um, drawing on the screen and I actually love the responsiveness of the Apple Pencil on the glass screen. So I've never felt the need to, to do the paper. One thing I have heard from some artists is that it can wear down the tips of your nibs uh, of your stylus a little bit faster. Um, but again, that's not my firsthand experience. So I'm not sure about that. So I'm sorry, I can't really give you advice on that. I actually really like just using it as is. I don't have any kind of screen protector on it. Um, the second question is what storage capacity iPad do you use? Ooh, I don't even remember. I think I have a, I think I have a half terabyte. I think I have a 512 gigabyte iPad. I think that I went pretty big this um, past time because I know my iPad that I had before 
Um, my very first iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil, it only had uh, 32 gigs, and I did feel that I was filling that space quite a lot, or quite quickly. Um, and I didn't really have much on the iPads other than um, I had my, uh, my Procreate drawings. So this time with this one, I went pretty big. So uh, yeah, I think I have 512. Um, so it really depends, uh, you know, what you think you'll be using your iPad for. Storage space is obviously a personal preference. I would say just get the largest amount that is affordable for you probably is good advice because then you can keep it a really long time. And so far, Procreate saves its files directly on the iPad. It's not saved to the cloud. Um, you can export, of course, your files out of Procreate and, uh, and save them anywhere that you want but I'm a little bit lazy for that. So I tend to just have galleries and galleries full of pages of artwork that I, that I never take off my iPad, which is why probably I went for the, the bigger storage. Um, so Sketchy posted a link to 30 Faces 30 Days Procreate Edition, which starts in May. So make sure you guys check that out. And yes, there is a coupon code. You guys can use my coupon code, which is 30F30DLISA. And I actually put it right here on my avocado. <laughs> I wrote it out for you guys if you want to use that to save some money. Um, yeah, please use that. It helps me out, but it'll also help you out as well. So 30F30DLISA, and you can use that right now to save money on the 30 Faces Challenge. Um, so I see some people from Netherlands, Saskatchewan, Los Angeles, Brooklyn, New York, Sweden, Southeast England, Ontario as well, New Jersey. Very cool. Welcome, guys. Thank you so much for joining me on this Saturday. So I am going to start drawing now because that's what you've come for. So I'm going to open up a uh, canvas. I have a preset that is an 8 by 10 inch canvas. And I set my canvases to 300 DPI, which stands for dots per inch, um, which is a good print resolution. And the reason why I do that is if I ever wanna print my artworks off, I know that the print quality will be good. It'll be a high enough resolution. So I would recommend 300 DPI and then whatever size format you wanna go with. Um, for my sketchbook stuff, I usually do eight by 10, but if I'm doing a commission work or something that I know that's gonna be printed larger scale, I'll obviously scale it up larger scale. Something for you guys to note is that uh, depending on what model of iPad and what size of screen you have, uh, the bigger you go in your canvas size, the, the less layers you get to use. So just kind of keep that in mind, but it'll depend on your, your screen size for that. So we are going to be drawing this beautiful portrait here that you can find on the Sketchy app. And I'm sure Sketchy will also post a link to this portrait in YouTube here. Um, but the, the person's name is Christina uh, Galu, Galubovich. I hope I'm saying her name right. Um, and uh, I liked this portrait because I thought it would be a good kind of warm up portrait. It's a straight kind of uh, straight on perspective. So we can we can use some of our kind of guidelines and tricks in order to draw it. So that will be nice. But I also was drawn to the color. I like kind of the grayish green of the background and then the pops of pink. So um, yeah, usually when I'm picking a portrait, I just something pops out at me, something that I find interesting. And, and for this, I think it was the color, the nice lighting and uh, uh, and so we're going to we're going to draw this one. So we're going to start with using um, I'm going to use the peppermint pencil. It's my favorite pencil personally, and you can find it under sketching. Uh, it comes standard with Procreate. And I see someone Janice asked, are you going to get one of the new iPads? I don't know, Janice. Um, so my iPad is a couple years old now, and. I still think it's really good. So, so I do have one of the ones that um, have the magnetic Apple Pencil charging, which I really like because my previous one didn't have that. I don't think I'm going to run out and get one of the new iPads, not because they don't sound amazing because the M1 chip is pretty cool. My, I actually bought a new um, iMac or sorry, not iMac, um, MacBook, <laughs> MacBook Air recently, and it's got the M1 chip and I really like it. It's super fast. But I also find my current iPad to be super fast and does everything that I need. So we'll have to wait and see. But as of right now, I'm not planning on buying the new one. But it sounds pretty cool. And there's the new version of Procreate coming out is going to have 3D drawing features on it. So I'm interested in seeing if our old older iPads will support that feature or not, or if that'll just be for the M1 iPads. So, so that's 
that might be a factor too in decision making. Yay, and I see some people have already signed up. Awesome. So we're gonna start with the, the Procreate Pencil. And right now I'm just using a split screen view where to get this view, you can just pop your dock up at the bottom and just drag your photo to one side and let it snap in place. Um, and so to start the drawing, I'm gonna do this, but then later on we might use Procreate's built-in canvas feature as well. So to do this, I'm just gonna kind of scale my canvas roughly the size of the picture, just to make it really easy to, to, to get the proportions as close as possible. And we're gonna start off with, um, I'm gonna just reduce my opacity a little bit, but just with like a, a oval, just to map out the basic shape of her face. And she's got kind of a heart-shaped face. So something like that. And then I'm going to put an eye line in. So the eye line will help us keep those lines on an even level. And then I'm gonna put a sym symmetry line down the middle. And I can't remember what I set my eraser to. I'm gonna set my eraser to the gouache brush just to keep a nice light eraser. So I'm just gonna kind of clean up a little bit of those lines a bit. And then what we're going to do is um, start off by just doing some really light rough-ins of the features. So I'm gonna start with just the generic shape of the eye and she's got really big eyes so we're to put those eyes in. Start off by just doing some really light and again, I love that the eyes kind of match the background color, so I definitely want to incorporate that into the portrait. Just the shape of the eye. And as I'm drawing, I'm going to try my best to read your comments. So if you have any questions at any point, whether it's something I'm doing or just a question about Procreate or a question about Sketchy's 30 Faces 30 Days, I'd be happy to answer that. So you can at any time just write your questions in the comment box on YouTube. So I'm just kind of um, suggesting generally where her features would go. And same with the eyebrows. I just wanna kind of get their overall shape, her eyelids. I'm doing this really lightly and wispy. I can zoom in a little bit. And now that I've got the overall proportion, I'm gonna zoom in a bit more. Actually, so I wanna make sure I have the, the right distance between the nose and the mouth. So I was going a little high there, so I'm just going to reduce that. And then I obviously need to fit a bit more of a chin in here. So I did a little bit of a circle. Sometimes I like to do this. Uh, if you've taken any lessons with me before, I do this strange thing sometimes where I like to use geometric shapes and I like to use circles in order to suggest where the volume of the face will be because to me it helps me with my shading a little bit later. So she's got these great cheekbones, so we're gonna kind of accentuate those there and her face gets more narrow at the bottom. And then the temples will bring those in a little bit. And then I'm gonna zoom out just so I can see her hair a bit more. And speaking of hair, I'm excited to show you today. I recently made a set of five uh, Procreate hair brushes um, because hair was something that I always felt that I could kind of improve on. And, I, and there's some good brushes in Procreate that come with the program for hair. Um, you can find them under Touch Up but I was never quite happy with it for everything I wanted to do, so I ended up making my own set. So I'll show you that a little bit later on when we get to, get to actually painting and coloring. So I'm just using kind of, again, wispy lines to suggest that movement of the hair because she's got a wave. So we're gonna kind of just 
put in some of that, that waviness here. We can come back to that and fix that up later. That temple, I want to bring it in a little bit more. I'm doing this line here under the chin. And then we're going to zoom in and do quite a bit more detail on the eyes. So I'm going to make this a little bit darker. For those of you that are uh, brand new to Procreate, I should mention, because I've just been doing things without mentioning it, sorry about that, that this is your opacity for your brush right here. So I often go back and forth between, if you're using a pressure sensitive stylus like the Apple Pencil, uh, you'll also have the ability to press harder or lighter to get a lighter or darker mark, but you can also uh, do that with opacity. And then this is the size of your brush. So I'm actually using my pencil on a pretty large size Okay, and now I'm gonna get in and do a little bit more precision with the eyelids. So we were talking about the new iPad that just got announced the other day by Apple. Are any of you planning on getting the new iPad Pro? Does anybody have plans to get one? Okay, so I've kind of um, tried to put in the shape of the eye there. So again, you can kind of put them side by side view to just make sure that, that you've got it the way that you want it. I like to do most of my details in paint rather than on the sketch layer, but I can put in a, f a few little details that'll kind of help me later on. Uh, sometimes I don't put in the eyelashes right away, but I'll just put them in right now. Why not? And then for the eyebrow, we're just gonna pay attention to the direction of the hair, also this distance between the eyebrow and the top of the eyelid. I was also going to mention, I, I'm talking about how the iPad a lot and how I'm using an iPad to draw with, but for those of you that maybe don't have an iPad, you could still do the 30 Faces 30 Days Challenge on your iPhone because Procreate has a iPhone version called Procreate Pocket, which is pretty much a full-scale version of Procreate. It's just a slightly different interface that works for the phone. Um, and it's, it's great. I have it on my phone and I use it often to test out brushes and, and color palettes and I use it for a variety of purposes, but I know a lot of artists who, uh, will draw and paint on their phone as well. So that is an option too, for anybody that doesn't have an iPad. I wanted to mention that. Okay, so again, I'm just getting, I feel like I'm exaggerating these eyes, like they're the giant cartoon eyes, but that's okay. And then I'll just kind of make some wispy eyelashes, something like that zoom out so i can already see where i need to adjust proportions a little bit so i'm going to go ahead and kind of do that now so i think i'm going to just adjust the nose and i guess i didn't do this eyebrow so that would be probably a good thing to add Bring that mouth up a little bit, because maybe I brought it down a bit too far. And then I'm gonna bring that chin up a little bit more too. Bring 
So these lines right now are just gonna help me with uh, shading. And then I can kind of erase my previous chin there. I'm constantly adjusting proportions. You'll see probably I'm still going to adjust them when we get to the painted layer as well. Another cool thing you can do with Procreate that I do quite a bit is you can take your selection tool, which looks like this little arrow, and make sure it's set to uniform. And you can scale your drawing. So that I like to draw sometimes really nice and big in the beginning and then scale it back so that I have more negative space. So I'm just going to kind of do that right now. And I actually might move it up a little bit more. You can really play around with it, which I like. One thing that I've always loved about drawing digitally and drawing on the iPad is the ability to ex experiment a bit more in kind of a risk-free way. So, you know, you can decide, okay, do I want this uh, close up or do I want to play around with the composition? Um, it's really no risk, right? If I decide I want to make this bigger again, I can go ahead and do that. So, so I'm going to try to capture, she's got kind of this shoulder bend here. And her clothing, we're going to keep it really loose, the clothing. So it's, that part is going to stay kind of loose. Okay, so I have a sketch that we can at least uh, start to work with. So I'm gonna name this layer uh, sketch because I'm very original like that. And I like to name my layers because I have worked on artworks before that have tons and tons of layers. So it just is good practice to do that right from the beginning so that when you are working with more complicated uh, challenging kind of uh, layer work later on than you get in that practice. So um, let me see, I just wanna take a look at your comments too. You can see some people signed up, yay. Hi from Toronto and the Netherlands, very cool. And New Jersey. Um, so Thomas asks, what level of experience with Procreate is reasonable to begin the 30 day, 30 faces challenge? I'm just getting started. I think that there's, uh, I, first of all, I think that the challenge is uh, very much open to all, all levels, whether you're a beginner or you're an experienced artist. That's one thing that I love about the sketchy community and all of the 30 days challenges is there is definitely something for everyone. Um, at the same time, there's two, two parts to this challenge if you think of it. You're, you're going to learn techniques in portraiture and you're also going to learn how to use a new medium which is the iPad, right, in Procreate. So, uh, so there's two kind of learning points there. And so if you're already pretty comfortable with portraiture, then I would say, oh, all you have to do is kind of learn a new medium and you're gonna learn that in 30 days, right? Or if you're already comfortable because you've used Procreate before, but maybe you want to learn more about portraiture, again, you've got one, one part that's comfortable and one part that's new. However, if you're, say, new to portraiture and new to Procreate, I still think that 30 days, 30 faces will be a great challenge for you because I know just from my experience participating in these challenges before is that every teacher teaches something that will work for one, that's something that'll work for every student basically. And also um, teachers will teach you skills, some of the skills being more kind of beginner skills. So for example, in my lessons, 
I tried to come at it from a beginner standpoint and then work my way into some more advanced features. So I do show you, for example, how to set up a canvas and I talk about resolution and I show you what tools I'm using and I try to talk through what I'm doing in every aspect that I'm working on. So I tried to be really um, cognizant of the fact that there would be students out there that would be learning portraiture for the first time, or sorry, pro procreate for the first time. And then at the same time, I also thought, hey, there's also people learning how to draw portraits in this challenge. So instead of jumping right into painting with my portraits, I do start kind of like what we're doing today by actually drawing the anatomy of the, the face as well. So um, so that being said, I know, I know that there's something definitely for everyone. Sorry, that was kind of a long-winded response. Oh, and Thomas just got a 12.9 inch 2020 model. Well, Thomas, I definitely think you need to take the, the course then. You need to sign up for 30 bases, 30 days if you have a new iPad. Like, that's so exciting. That's great. And Malika says, I got mine last year, still paying for it. I may skip this new edition and wait for the next. Yeah, that's the thing, right? You can't get caught up in that cycle of always wanting the newest because that can get expensive really fast and honestly some of the older ipads are great models so that's true too and cheryl's on android user using clip studio paint yeah definitely so i should mention too if you're an android user i still think there's room for you in this 30 faces 30 days challenge because again there's the portraiture component and a lot of the techniques that you learn in procreate can easily be applied to other programs as well so i would say to also android users definitely consider signing up because i still think there's a lot to learn um, in the challenge for sure Okay, so let me get going on this thing, or otherwise I'll never finish. So I'm gonna make a new layer and I'm going to put this layer below and I'll rename it base for base layer. And this will be my base color layer. And what we're going to do is we are going to go to our palette, which is our color wheel. We're gonna click on palettes and we're going to do a cool semi new feature in Procreate, which is creating a palette from a photo. So you're gonna choose the plus button, new from photos, and then choose the photo that we've been working on. And magically it creates this beautiful palette based on some of the colors in the photo. Now it's not always completely perfect, right? There's definitely other colors that I'll wanna use, but it's a really nice starting point. So I really like that new feature. Um, we're gonna use one of my favorite brushes, which is the gouache brush, just to start for our base, but I will also be using some more painterly, well, the gouache brush is a painterly brush as well, but I'll also be using some other brushes, some paint brushes uh, for this portrait as well, just to branch out a little bit. I really like the gouache brush though, because it's a nice, um, soft, smooth brush that is buildable. So it, once you put down a layer, you can see, hopefully you guys can see this, as I put down a second layer, it's building upon that color. So it's a really nice portrait brush. Um, if you're looking for something that's a little bit more smooth, because this one's very painterly, you also might want to try out some of the airbrushing options. These are super smooth brushes. So if I just, for example, stay on the soft brush and that's way too big, but use it to airbrush in the whites of the eyes here. It's just very, very smooth. And if you reduce the opacity on it too, you can get some really nice effects. Um, lately, I've also really enjoyed, so I'll just kind of show you the airbrushing effects first though. So we'll just kind of go through and add some nice highlights to her T-zone, which is her forehead, her nose, her chin, and her cheeks. We'll put a little bit there too, why not? Um, so that's a really nice option as well. Um, but one thing I've really enjoyed working with lately too is the spray paints. They're a lot of fun for portraiture as well. So especially if people have freckles, they are so much fun to use for freckles. So if you use the splatter brush, for example, and uh, you can use it on a really low brush size and play around with the opacity and you get this nice little buildable texture and you can go over top of it and just kind of build shading that way as well. So I'm gonna add in, I'm using a little bit of an orangey tone now just to add in the warmer tones in her skin. And 
And this is kind of just a good start for my base. I actually think I want to switch over to my color overlayer. Um, and we can actually keep using, why don't we keep using this spray paint? Because it's kind of fun. And I don't think I've done this in a lesson, at least recently on Sketchy. So I like to show you some new things in case there's some people right now watching who have taken my Procreate classes on Sketchy. I wanna show you some new stuff as well. So yeah, I'm using the spray paint. And I should mention too, if any of you are interested in more Procreate lessons, I've got a ton of them in the Sketchy Art School. So I've been teaching um, classes in the Sketchy Art School for a few years now, and most of my classes are Procreate with the exception of um, a watercolor class that I did. And so uh, I have also a Procreate bundled class, which has basically all of my classes kind of bundled together into one big, huge package, which includes portrait drawing, animal portrait drawing, brush making. So for people that are interested in learning how to make your own custom brushes in Procreate too, you might be interested in checking that out. So it's just called Portraits in Procreate with Lisa Filion and uh, yeah, if you're, if you're obsessed with <laughs> drawing and painting and procreate the way that I am, you might want to check those out. Okay, so I'm just going to use this. I'm going to take, uh, for those of you, again, that are new to procreate, you can tap on your screen once you've laid down color, and you can color select, so you can pick with your finger, which is really cool, so you don't always have to go back and forth to your palette. Anybody who has the new Apple Pencil, do you find yourself sometimes accidentally uh, toggling it, to which switches to the eraser? So if you toggle, you tap on your Apple Pencil, I don't know if you guys can see on the screen, but it switches back and forth between the eraser and uh, the brush, which is cool, but I sometimes hit it by accident. Does that happen to anybody else? Or is it just me? Something that I wanted to mention, um, because I don't think I do mention it in the, the 30 days challenge, is sometimes my students ask me, um, or they're looking, they're looking at me drawing, for example, with something like this, and they say, you know what, the, my paintbrush, I'm using the exact same paintbrush as you, but it doesn't seem to be going down on the page in the same way. Um, that might be because of your pressure sensitivity settings in Procreate. So I'm just gonna quickly show you how you can change those right now. I actually have it set up on here already. So if you go to, um, if you go to your wrench, which is your actions panel, and you click on preferences, which is over here on the right, and then you click on edit pressure curve, your pressure curve will look like this if you haven't touched it already. So it's set right in the middle. And this is basically showing you how much pressure you need to apply on the page with your Apple Pencil or your stylus. Um, when I first, this is a kind of an embarrassing story, guys. When I first got my very first iPad Pro with Apple Pencil, I drew on it so much that I developed basically carpal tunnel and had to go and get physio on my wrist because I messed up my wrist so badly pressing on the screen. And it's an embarrassing story because you know the, the physiotherapist always thinks, is, like, is it a sports injury? And I had to be like, oh, it's a drawing injury. So anyway, that can happen. So that's why I like to warn people about that. And what I do now is I set my pressure curve way up like this. Um, which really helps my wrist because I don't have to press as hard on my screen. So I thought I would share that little tip with you in case any of you are also experiencing that. My little embarrassing story. Okay, I'm using a bit of blue um, under the eyes because you can use cool colors to create kind of shadow effects and you don't want to go too heavy with it because you obviously want the person to still look nice and alive um, but i like to just add in some colors to the skin tone so if you look carefully at your source image you're probably going to see some colors that maybe you didn't see right away 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to switch back to just a, a brush that I'm really comfortable with, which is the gouache brush here. And I'm going to keep it on a kind of a light blue gray. And just color in the eyes, this pale blue, because the whites of our eyes are not actually pure white. And then you can put kind of white over top of it, but you're gonna create this nice rounded effect. And our eyeballs are obviously round, so we don't want them to look flat. So I'm gonna reduce the opacity on that brush so it's nice and light. And I might need to make it a little bit darker, get kind of a neutral color, like a light gray. And if you can see that on the portrait, what I am doing right now is I'm just, I'm exaggerating it a little bit, but I'm shading it like I would a sphere. And I'll also just use the same color, because why not, to fill in the color of her eye. And I'll do the same thing on this side. And then if I look closely too, I see pinks, obviously, in the corners of the eyes, so I'm gonna add some pink. What you do to one eye, it's good practice to do it to the other, so go back and forth between the two eyes rather than just, this is a tip that I would have for you, rather than just you know finishing one eye and then moving on to the second eye, kind of do them at the same time so they stay pretty symmetrical. I'm also, as I'm doing this, I'm, I'm aware of the fact that my eyes are drawn a little bit cartoony and large right now, so I'm actually going to kind of rein them in a little bit, make them a little bit smaller as I add this shading. I'm also, as I'm doing this, I'm aware of the fact that my eyes are drawn a little bit cartoony and large right now, so I'm actually going to kind of rein them in. Just clean up that edge. I want to keep that... Um, iris nice and round and sorry I'll look uh, I'll look at your comments so uh, I just downloaded Betty says I just downloaded your hair and ballpoint pen brush sets from Etsy I love your brushes I'm very excited to see a ballpoint set too Oh, thanks, Betty. Yeah, the ballpoint pen was something that was suggested by a friend of mine who does a lot of shading in um, in pen. So I, I would like to expand on that set probably eventually, but I just did the one pen. It was actually a challenging one for me to do. So I'd love your feedback on it to see what you think about using it and if it feels natural. Because um, I'm always trying to improve my brushes and especially from artists who are ballpoint pen artists, which, which I'm really not. Um, so, so that's why I would love more feedback. But I tried to take in feedback from uh, a bunch of artists who kind of tried it out and let me know that they felt that it was pretty natural before I put it on my Etsy shop. Yeah, if anyone's interested, I do have an Etsy shop. Um, it's Pixel Princess Art is my Etsy shop, and I sell all of my brushes on that. I also sell my brushes on my website as well, which is just lisafillion.com. Um, so whatever you're more comfortable with, but I have tons of brushes now that can be used for a variety of different purposes in Procreate. But my newest brush set is um, the hair brushes and the ballpoint pen brush. Um, Cindy asks, can one use an older iPad for this challenge? Mine doesn't even have the split screen feature. Yes, 100%. I used to, my very first iPad, well, it was the very first iPad, but my very first iPad that I drew the most on was an iPad mini, which now when I look back on that, I'm like, wow, that was a really small screen, right? <laughs> but I loved that thing and I used it all the time and I used like my dollar store stylus on it and I just, I had my phone set up on it uh, to use as a reference. So what, what you would just do is you would just have another device next to you to use for your reference, which is no big deal, honestly. So even if you don't have a split screen view, the split screen view is nice, um, but you don't need it. Oh, other also, you don't need the split screen view because I'll show you this other way you can do it. I don't know why I'm not thinking of this. You can go to, and I do this in my lessons for 30 faces, 30 days, but now Procreate has added a feature where you can again go to the wrench, which is actions, 
and you can choose um, canvas and you can choose reference. So you're gonna turn on reference. It automatically selects your canvas you're working on, but what you're gonna do is go to image, import image, and you're gonna select the image you're working from. And now you have a little floating reference screen inside of Procreate, which is pretty cool. So your older iPad should hopefully be able to do that if it has the newest version of Procreate on it. And even if you're not working in the newest version of Procreate, just do that iPhone trick and have another device next to you. Hopefully that helps. Oh, and uh, Janice asks, I missed, are you on a color under layer? Right now I'm over. So I have two, I have three layers total. My base layer I did really, really quickly. I just kind of laid down some solid colors and then now I'm coloring over. So I am going over top of my pencil lines right now. Okay, so I'm gonna do the lower lids here. Just kind of put those in. And I'm definitely covering up my eyelashes, but that's okay, because I like to do my eyelashes on a different layer, layer anyway. I wanted to grab a pink. There we go. It's kind of a purpley pink that I'll use over top here. Again, you can see I'm kind of adjusting my proportions as I go. Feel like I need to do less talking and more more drawing now <laughs> but I want to answer your questions so keep asking your questions you guys have asked good ones so far yeah and sketchy kind of answered that um, iPad question better than I did as well that as long as it runs procreate you can use it for the challenge that's all you need. You need Procreate. And like I even said, though, even Android users, if you don't have Procreate, you could use another drawing app. It's not, you're going to have to figure out the features of that drawing app yourself, but the principles of drawing digitally are going to be the same. Okay, I got to work on this nose because it's bothering me so much because it's not right at all. So I'm going to add a little bit of a, a brown gray and just fix up the shape of the nose. kind of jumping around a little bit, but I'm also going to just fill in the eyebrows a little bit more. And I'm going to be adjusting the face shape as I go as well. So I'm using kind of a, a gray, a charcoal-y kind of color right now. I will go back to using that spray paint technique because I really did like it, but I'm, I'm going to kind of quickly fill in some skin tone with the gouache brush first. And I want to add a little bit of more of a, like a yellowy tone to it too. So if you find that you need to just, you know, make the face a little bit warmer, you can just do a really thin layer of a warm color over top of your skin tone and that will just, you know, warm things up a little bit. And I want this to be more pink. So I'm looking at kind of, you know, she's got some pinks in her cheek. Get 
going to take the color that's surrounding the nose and just blend that in. A lighter color for right above the lips. Taking a darker kind of brown now and mapping in some shadows. And then the corners of the eyes generally are going to be darker, right? And under the eyes a little bit too. So don't forget to, to add in some shadow there. And then what I think I'm going to do um, is just because it's bothering me <laughs> is I'm going to just put a layer of shading over the whole hair. You could do this on the base layer as well. So it'll just help me to frame the face a little bit more too. I know I need to kind of bring those cheekbones in a little bit. Okay, um, I'm going to go back to using a darker color and a finer brush, which is right now still the gouache brush, but you could use any, any paintbrush of your choice. And I'm going to keep working on the eyes because I feel like they're really important for any portrait, of course. So I want to capture this kind of curve here in her eyelid. And then we could maybe also um, make this eye color a bit more accurate too. So the nice thing is you can also zoom in on this canvas feature in Procreate as well. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. So I'm just trying to grab some of the colors that I'm seeing in the eyes. So she's got kind of hazel, golden kind of colored eyes. So with definitely hints of green in there, which I might want to accentuate even more because I think I'm definitely going to use some of that, those hints of green in the background. And I like to make the eyes really dramatic, so if I can add some more fluorescent kind of colors in there, I'm going to do that. And 
And then I'm just gonna do kind of a little bit of a kind of dotting technique, stippling, I guess you could say, around the outside of the eye. And the reflections in the eye, I'm gonna do on a different layer, on a lighting layer. So I'm kind of, if you're wondering, I'm kind of ignoring those right now. When you're cleaning up the edges, a trick that I always use, I don't know if you saw me do it, but is to grab the color that surrounds the outline that you're putting down. So in my case, the outline of the eye, and then just use that to kind of clean up that edge. When you're cleaning up the edges, so you can do it over here as well. You can just see how that, hopefully you can see how that made it look a little bit more crisp. Um, Betty asks, are you painting with a splatter brush on a separate layer? Normally I would if I did freckles over top, so I'm, hopefully we're gonna get to that today, but um, I will do it on a different layer. Mary asks, do you use screen protectors such as paper like? Uh, no, so I don't. Uh, I've never used a screen protector. I actually just really got used to drawing directly on the iPad screen, so that's what I do. I lied, I said I wasn't gonna put in the little flex, but I mean, I will still put a lighting effect on top. It just looks so weird without those little flex in there. Sometimes I can't deal with it, I just gotta do something. Okay. Someone in the comments said she looks like Cher. I think you're right. I think my version does right now. Obviously, I need to change the proportions a little bit, but yeah. But maybe, it, no, it's my portrait. It looks like Cher for sure. Okay. I think that also if we start adding the eyelashes, I am going to be happier with uh, the portrait overall. So I think I might add that next. Sometimes I also just, you know, sometimes people ask me, well, why do you choose to do things in a certain order? Honestly, sometimes it's just, if something really bothers me, I'm, I'm going to deal with that right away. And so right now, for example, I just want to get these eyes right. And so because they're bothering me, I'm going to keep working on them. Honestly, sometimes it's just, if something really bothers me, I'm, I'm going to deal with that right away. And so right now, for example, I just want to get these eyes right. And so because they're bothering me, I'm going to keep working on them. So we'll kind of uh, zoom away a little bit here so you can see what's going on. Again, I'm still adjusting the face shape. So 
So let's do a hair layer because why not? And on the hair layer, I like to do a few things. I like to do eyebrows. I like to do um, obviously hair and eyelashes too. And you know why I think also, in terms of proportion-wise, if I look at the two, I need to bring the proportion of my face um, a little bit squished more. So actually, before we do the hair, we are going to do a trick in Procreate where if you take your first layer and you combine down, and then you go to your layer group and you keep pressing combine down, combine down, now everything is under that one group. The trick is you can go to adjustments and you can choose liquify and if you choose push and you have to kind of adjust it to the right size I'm gonna make mine pretty big you can use it to uh, fine-tune features so if you need to make any adjustments I'll just go back. You could do it also on a smaller step and do it with just the eyes, for example. Something like that. It just does some subtle adjustments um, that can be helpful. There we go. So I'm gonna undo, I can stay in that layer group, but I'm gonna go back on hair. And I'm gonna use actually uh, my hair brushes for this since I'm excited about them right now. So my hairbrush set comes with five brushes, including an eyelash brush, straight hair, flowing hair, curly hair, and tight curl. And for the eyelash, we are um, going to use that as obviously the eyelashes, but you can also use it for single hairs as well. So, um, you can use them, they take some practice to get used to, but they create like a nice little natural kind of eyelash effect. So you can kind of see it there. You can also use, um, I often used a pencil for eyelashes or sometimes I've used um, one of the inking brushes as well, like the studio pen for eyelashes. Those are other good brushes to use. So something like that. And then I, I'm going to play with those a little bit more. But I wanna use the straight hair and flowing hair brushes. So I'll just show you guys the difference between them. So my straight hair brush looks like this up close. And so it's closer together. And then my flowing hair brush kind of has this kind of bend to it. So I actually think in this case, the flowing hair brush will work a little bit better. Um, if you guys are, use, are looking for brushes that come with Procreate, you can go to uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Touch-ups. So it looks like a little makeup brush, touch-ups. And they have their own version of fine hair, flowing hair, and short hair. And I've used flowing hair a lot in the past as well, and that's a good brush to use also. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my hairbrush, my flowing hair. I'm going to make my brush pretty big. And so this is why I, I like to lay down that um, base layer of the color first so that then I can add my streaks into the hair afterwards. So we'll get a few different colors of brown and black kind of mixed in. It looks like she's got lighter um, ends to her hair. It becomes more brown, so kind of add that. And then we want some highlights, so we want some kind of pale, silvery kind of colors. Just start them at the roots. And I'm just using that to give the hair some dimension.
And then something we haven't even used yet is Procreate has a smudge setting, a smudge tool, which is handy. So what I like to do as well is I like to take my smudge tool and set it to, it can be anything. You can set it to the same brush you're using or you can set it to any kind of uh, brush that, sorry if I have a notification up on my screen there, I just realized that. Um, but set it to any kind of brush that, oh, I think it's up here. Apologies, guys, if there was that notification on the screen. Um, I like to set it to the gouache brush because, again, it's a nice soft shading brush. And then you can take it and strategically kind of choose what areas to soften and what areas to keep that harder kind of texture of hair. You can also use a hairbrush on the part too, so you can get the same color as the skin or what the scalp of the hair would be, and then use it just to create a little bit of a texture in the part. And then I'm gonna just kind of smudge that out. And then I also will use the, the straight hair brush a little bit too. Um, I'm gonna put it on a, a dark setting and I'm going to use it just to put in the, the really dark darks. And I know we're coming up to kind of the hour point now, guys. You can see that usually a portrait, I mean, I have talked a lot, but usually a portrait takes me a few hours to complete. Um, it depends on how detailed or how realistic I wanna go with the portrait. So we're definitely not going to get everything done that I wanted to get done today, but I can probably keep going a little bit longer if Sketchy's okay with that, just to just to finish up a few things. Okay, so we've got a good start with the hair. It's not quite done. Um, I like to, for eyebrows, I like to go back to that peppermint pencil that we used before. Um, sorry, it is under sketching. And I'm going to stay on this, this dark black, but I'm gonna make it a little bit more charcoal because her eyebrows aren't quite black. And I'm also going to take, um, I'm gonna go back and forth and take the color of her skin tone around it too, just to kind of create those, those wispy hairs. So with eyebrows or any kind of hair, you can you can also take the negative space color. Hopefully that makes sense. And then we talked about looking at the direction of the eyebrow hairs before, so we're just doing that again. This time as our kind of more good copy. And the nice thing about doing this on a different layer is that we can go back to our color layer and we can still work on that color layer but not disturb anything that we just did. So those eyebrows are on there now. And so on my color layer, I'm going to switch back to a paintbrush. So on my color layer, I'm going to switch back to a 
And same with the eyelashes. We don't have to worry about messing those up. I'm gonna work on the nose a little bit. See if we can at least finish some of the, the major features of our face here today. I will say though, my, my sketchy 30 Faces 30 Days lessons, um, I mentioned to you that usually my portraits I'll spend a little bit more than an hour on. Uh, for sketchy 30 Faces in 30 Days, all of the lessons, generally speaking, are an hour or less. And in my two lessons, we do a portrait from start to finish in one hour. So um, it is possible. I think I was just talking too much today. I was too distracted. <laughs> Telling you guys about my carpal tunnel stories and reading all your wonderful comments. But uh, yeah, if, if, I, if I'm really focused, I can definitely do it within an hour. Or if I have a bit of a plan going into a lesson, for sure. So just kind of doing a bit of subtle outlining around the nose before I put in the nostrils. And I want to get to those freckles, so don't worry, I haven't forgotten about them. The nose ring I would typically do on a new layer as well. So I don't know if we're gonna have time to do it in this session, but just so you're aware, I would definitely do jewelry on its own layer, or sometimes I will put it on a lighting layer, which will be where I also put the flex of light in the eyeballs. Just going to quickly outline the lips and also kind of fix the proportion of them a little bit. I'm constantly looking, um, and this might go without saying for those of you who are portrait artists, but I'm constantly looking at my source photo and back at my drawing all the time. So back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, making adjustments, you know, what proportions I can still kind of adjust even on this color layer. This is um, darker in here, so I'm going to just suggest, again, the cheekbones. I'm gonna suggest a bit of a shadow under the nose. More shadow over top of the eyes. Also going to lighten certain areas that might have gotten a little bit too heavy with value. Okay, so before I, I get too crazy here, what I think we can do next is um, maybe do that freckle layer we were talking about. So above color, I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call it freckles. And I'm going to use my spray paints. And I like splatters, the one I was using before, but I also like flicks for bigger freckles. So I think we'll use those. And I love doing it on a different layer because then you don't have to worry about getting it all perfectly in the lines. You can just erase what you don't want. 
So you gotta find the kind of the right color, the right size. So you might have to experiment a little bit first. That's a really good size. The opacity I'm not so worried about because I can go over and fix opacity and you can change the size of it as you go too, just so that it's a little bit maybe unexpected. So I'm kind of moving my size up and down a little bit. And I need to read comments. <laughs> uh, Malika asks, how many layers would you use to create a portrait and what does it depend on? Um, it depends on your mood. <laughs> so the safe, thing, the safe thing to say is I would use at least probably five layers for a portrait because by using layers, you're helping to isolate certain parts of your portrait that you can manipulate later on and you're not kind of stuck with all one layer. That being said, sometimes I just use Procreate more like a sketchbook and I'll just do everything on one layer and that's also a challenge within itself. So it really is up to you. And then I've done more complex drawings um, and some of those more complex ones, for example, I do in one of the lessons that I have on the Sketchy Art School, it's called uh, Frida um it's uh, portraits and procreate with with frida basically and so uh it's a whole like frida themed lesson and in one of the final lessons where we kind of put everything together it's really complex because we're doing um we're doing patent patterns for the background and copying different elements over and over again to create patterns so you end up with tons and tons of layers so again it depends on the complexity of the image um but generally speaking i would say i use between five and ten layers per portrait and how to grab a perfect white color couple of things. If you haven't changed the background color, it's always a pure white. So you can just tap and click with your finger. That's the super easiest way of doing it. If you have already changed the background color and you no longer have a pure white on your page, you can go into um, your color wheel. And on this view of the color wheel, I agree with you that it's really hard to pick a pure white. So you might want to go to this other view, the classic view of the color wheel. And if you go right up top in the very top left corner, you're going to get pure white. You can also, if you want to get super technical, go to the value version of the color wheel. And uh, any of you that are maybe graphic designers or who have worked with Photoshop or Illustrator before will know that the hexadecimal number for white are a bunch of Fs. One, two, three, four, five, six, maybe six Fs. So you can just type in all those Fs and white will appear as well. So those are my tips for getting a pure white. And Ellen says you're torn between an iPad Pro and an iMac. I have an older iPad Pro with the Apple One. It was given to me. Yeah, it's a tough choice, huh? Like the, the new iMacs look really nice too. I guess it depends on what your applications are generally going to be. Um, I always tell my students, because I teach high school students, and so they are generally they generally get new devices when they're about to go off into college or university, for example. And so they'll say, oh, I'm torn. Should I get a, a MacBook or should I get an iPad? And obviously it depends on what program they're going into. But if it's a student I know who has loved drawing on the iPad, I will always say, you know what, if I was going into college and university right now, I would choose an iPad hands down because you could read your texts on it, your textbook stuff. You can take uh, handwritten notes on it. You can obviously draw on it. You can consume media on it. You can, you know, you can even type on it if you get a keyboard. So uh, I say, unless you need specialized programs that are only available on a computer, I would probably say an iPad. Okay, I'm reading your... 
And uh, Joe has a question about the discount code. So maybe, maybe Sketchy can answer that, but go ahead and use my discount code guys. So it's uh, 30F30DLISA. And right now what I'm doing with the freckles is I'm going to take my eraser now and I'm going to reduce the opacity on my eraser. And I'm just gonna go over top and kind of take away areas that I don't want or lighten areas. So I'm just kind of making it more subtle in some areas. And if there's any freckles that got in places that I'm not happy, like I obviously don't want freckles inside the eyeball, I'm just gonna go in and erase those. So it's really, really easy to use any kind of splatter brushes for freckles. There we go. And it's a nice subtle difference, but I really like the way it looks. I'm also going to create a new layer and just call it, um, hmm, I'll just call it texture. And I'm going to go back and use my splatter brush to create some of this, um, some of this more natural looking kind of texture here. So you gotta get the right spray nozzle. So I'm gonna reduce the size of the brush a little bit. There we go. And I was mentioning this at the beginning of this lesson, I guess if you could call it a lesson, <laughs> where we can use these spray paint brushes to create some really nice effects on skin tones. Sketchy said I'm allowed to go longer, so hopefully that's okay. I don't know about all of you, but once you start working on a project in Procreate, it's really hard to stop for me. I almost just like to sit down in one session and, and finish something from start to finish, even if it's like a five-hour drawing, just sit down and do it if I can. Okay, so I think this is just has a nice subtle effect. It's helping to blend. You could obviously also use your smudge tool, which is this little blendy looking guy over here. Um, but I really like using okay, so I think this just has a nice subtle these effect. splatter brushes. I can add in a bit more color too. So I'm adding in some warmer tones. I can also make this nostril maybe look a little bit more natural kind of by just blending that out. And I would also probably do this with the smudge tool too, because I don't want it to look like an outline. I want it to look nice and natural. And then I'm just color selecting other colors around just to blend in those colors. And then I want to try to get this looking right over here and over here. She's got a lot more glow in the corner of her eyes, which you could put on um, a lighting layer, which I keep mentioning to you that I haven't done yet, but I will want to do a lighting layer. Can also even help with you know, adding a little bit of a shadowy kind of effect at the sides of the face here. Again, you have to kind of play with the size of the brush and the opacity to get the right effect. Could also use it a little bit as a filler just to fill in the eyebrows a bit, make them a little darker. I think it's really fun to use the, the splatter brushes kind of as airbrushes. So I'm going to use it to just uh, define the chin a bit more.
And why not just kind of go nuts with it now that I'm using it here? Use it with white and pink and reduce the spray on it. You can also use it even with a small spray on the lips. Because if you use it on a, a really small fine brush setting, then you can actually do even some fine outlining with it. I also want these lips just to look a little bit more natural, kind of naturally blend in with the, the skin surrounding them. So I'm also going to use this splatter brush to help with that. You can see I zoom in, in and out a lot. I also find that's a really helpful, useful feature in Procreate. Okay, so it's getting there. Um, I'm going to just open it up to any final questions now because we're going to start to kind of finish things up. Uh, I would still, you know, work on this longer. I'm going to do, while I'm waiting for you guys to ask your questions, I'm going to do a lighting layer so I can show you what I would do with that. So I'm going to use luminance brushes that are found in Procreate. I like the light brush and I'm going to change my color to white and I'm going to zoom right in make my brush pretty small and use it to make some tiny little reflections in the eyes. And I'm using the eye as a guide, but I am, I don't need to do, you know, every single fleck in the eye exactly the way it is in the photograph. So I'm okay with kind of interpreting it. And then I usually start to add in some of my own fun. So maybe a little bit more glow around the eyes or you could see you could use it to bring out the whites of the eyeballs or just to shape the iris a little bit more because this is on its own layer too we can do the same trick that we did with the freckles and we can go over top of it with a paintbrush eraser and if anything is just a little too harsh, like maybe these these whites right here are a little bit too much, um, I can just fix that later on. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing over here where I'm going to just clean up the iris a little bit make that white of the eye really pop. I'm going to kind of outline some of my eyelashes. I'm going to reduce the opacity on my brush and then use it to do a little bit of outlining also on the lips. I'm also going to suggest the nose ring here. So this is where I might have to kind of fix my nose a little bit because I think it comes out too far. So if I just do that with the, the ring, then I could go back to a previous layer, like maybe the texture layer, or it could be even the one before that. It, it kind of doesn't matter. Just a previous layer where you could add a bit of a dark tone to just to make that ring pop um, and then you could also go on the lighting layer with I'm going to be using the gouache brush but with maybe a charcoal gray and I'm going to make this brush really small and I'm just going to give it a little bit of an outline
And then I also want to add like maybe a tinge of yellow into it as well, because I believe it's a, a yellow gold ring. And then use your smudge tool if you want to soften all of these edges so they don't look like outlines anymore. And then you can just soften that up. And when you zoom out, it looks quite nice. There's so much more that I want to do to this portrait, um, but I don't have time. So I'm going to kind of probably leave it here. I would probably still kind of keep layering colors. Um, so I'll probably keep doing that. I'll keep layering the skin, build it up a little bit more, make it because it's still a little bit flat. I want to make it have more volume. So that's something I would keep working on. The other thing I would do is I would add a layer below everything for the clothing. Um, so I'll just rename this clothing and a thing that I like to do that I will also talk about in my lessons is I like to do some stamping techniques. So I also have a set of brushes. One of my favorite set of brushes that I've ever made are my watercolor stamps. Um, so they are these stamps here and they're made from real watercolor. So what's cool about them is that you can take uh, any of these stamps on a new layer and you know lay them down like so and then all of a sudden you've kind of created something that's maybe a little bit abstract you can take your uh, eraser tool and also set it to a stamp so let me see i have too many brushes now i can't even find my own brushes um, and i like to also do the opposite of you know, so some stuff I take out and some stuff I, I leave in, for example, and then just kind of do some layering over top of that. And it's a really fun technique um, that makes it a little bit abstract. And I really love doing that. And another thing, if any of you have seen my work before, I, I really I have a thing for putting circles behind people's heads. I don't really know why, it's just what I like. So I also have some watercolor circles um where i would probably take like for this one i can really when i saw this portrait right away i could envision like a nice kind of soft green and then i would do the circle on a new layer and put it beneath the clothing and sorry i'm going fast at the end here guys just for the sake of time but i do go over this stuff more in my uh, 30 faces 30 days lesson um, so I'm just gonna make that circle a bit bigger with stamps it's a lot of experimentation as you can see there we go I like that and then you can also take your selection tool and just fine-tune it to be kind of you know exactly the way that you want it in terms of balance and use of space maybe something like that. So I just kind of quickly added those elements in, um, but you know, this is typically kind of the style that I do where I like to have uh, a combination of some realistic elements to the portrait and then some fun kind of abstract colorful elements as well. So I'm just gonna take a look at your comments here. Uh, Malika says, I have your Frida class. Think about it all the time. Your class is awesome. Oh, thanks so much. I loved doing the Frida class. Uh, I mean, I've loved doing all the classes that I've done on the Sketchy Art School and meeting students from all over the world. But um, that Frida class, I love Frida so much. So that was super fun to do. Um, Ooh, last year, Mary purchased an iPad Pro. Very fun. It's so good, right? The new iPad Pros are amazing. Oh, you guys, some of you are hearing an echo. I'm sorry about that. I uh, hope that wasn't too annoying for you. And I think Sketchy answered a question already about classes being available for replay. That's what's one of the things that I also um, love about 
sketchy and the classes they offer in the sketchy art school is that you can uh, access them at any time. So you purchase them once, but then down the road, if you want to um, go back and, and redo any of the classes or lessons, or you can do it at your own pace, it's always available for you. So that's really neat as well. And same with the 30 faces in 30 days, you can work at your own pace. So you can of course try to do it every day, which is awesome, but life gets in the way. And so if it takes you longer than the 30 days to complete, that's totally okay. Um, and there's so many great teachers that I'm really excited about. So I really hope you will all consider signing up for the challenge, which starts in a week, which is super crazy that May is just a week away as well. So I'm gonna keep working on this portrait. I hope you guys got a little bit something out of it today and I hope you enjoyed um, drawing along with me today. And I'm super excited about our May 30 Faces 30 Days Challenge. Remember that if you haven't signed up yet and you wanna use my coupon code to get some money off, use uh, 30F30DLISA and uh, that'll save you some money so you can go and do that anytime. Okay, so I look forward to seeing you guys all in the challenge and uh, make sure that you, you know, post your artwork so that we can see what you've done. And uh, thank you for watching today and uh, yeah, have a great day, okay? So thanks guys, see you later, bye.